Hi everyone, it's Monica of That's So Monica, and I'm going to be showing you today how I created the sleeve for this piece. So this was the first wrap blouse with that sleeve that I did, um, that I self-drafted. I was actually going to come out with the pattern, um, and just about a week before I was going to get everything solidified, McCall's actually came out with something similar, which is the 7627. So I decided not to do a pattern, however I received a lot of requests as to how I created my sleeve and how I made mine different. So what I decided to do was go ahead and hack McCall's pattern with my sleeve method, and that's what you'll see here. To create the bodice, use any wrap blouse pattern of your choice. For this tutorial, I used McCall 7627 as my hack. I extended the arm by 6 inches and the waist down by 5 inches using a curved ruler for shape. I also extended it out on the side a little bit. In this video, you'll see exactly what I did. As you can see, I went out the six inches at the shoulder, and then at the waist, I went down five inches, and I used a curved ruler and extended it out on the side. Here's just another diagram with the picture showing you exactly what I did. The red dots will signify exactly how I went down and um, exactly how you should go about doing your bodice. For the sleeve, you'll need three pieces. The first is your outer sleeve, the second is the inner sleeve, and your third is your armband, which is pattern piece number 11. Here's just a view of what I did. The first piece that I just showed, that's the first pattern piece. Number two is your inner sleeve, and then this is your armband. Here you can see 18 inches across at the top, 20 inches down, 28 inches across, and then grayed out as an, on a diagonal if you would like. And then for the inner sleeve, it's 18 inches across and 9 inches down. Keep in mind that the top two portions of your inner sleeve and outer sleeve need to match. Here's me showing you exactly what I did to create the folds and the pin tucks and along this video you'll see that I will actually demonstrate it. So there's five inches down and then those are my pin tucks. I made markings on my pattern and then I went five inches down as well. And here you can see exactly what I did. So from the top it's five inches down and then the second row is five inches down from that first row and then pin tucks are every four inches. You're gonna go down five inches and that's going to be your first pleat your first fold over okay and then the next one is going to be about 10.5 inches okay so what you're going to do is across you're going to do four inches across and that's where you're going to actually mark where you want your little pin tucks to go and then going down you're going to do the same. Across, 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 okay? Now once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna fold your fabric. And this is going to be your first pleat. So where I'm putting the pin is actually where you will be sewing. So for your pins, you're going to place your pin tucks four inches apart, starting from the first row, and then you'll just follow the second row exactly as what you did in the first. So you go ahead and put your pins in. Make sure you catch both sides of the fabric. And then you're gonna do the same for this piece here. You're gonna fold that. I'm gonna go ahead and put your pins in right where your markings are. So that's what this looks like. This is a closer look. So you're going to remember what I told you. You're going to stitch up and down, catching these two pieces. So you're gonna make sure to catch the back as well as the front on that pleat. And you're just gonna go up and down, just a little stitch up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're going to do that eight times. Here's a look at it all pinned up. Now I'm going to 
now that you've sewn, see, stitched, and stitch, stitch, and stitch here, and stitched here, stitched here. Make sure you clean it up with these two. Stitch here. Turn it to the back side. And get rid of any, you need to get rid of any of these little straggly things. <laughs> Your straggly pieces of thread, okay? Make sure you, um, you clip those, either use scissors or you can use your little clipping shears. It's up to you. And there you have it. So that's that's this piece here. Now this is done. Now that's done. You're going to leave this part your side seam is going to be open, so you're going to be spreading that apart when you go to close your sleeve. I gave it a light press because I don't want it too too um, too straight. I want it to have that nice billowy effect to it, so that the fabric you know moves and shifts. But I also don't want it too structured. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want it too structured. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this piece which is your inner sleeve piece and you're going to be sewing that on top of this piece. So you're going to turn your outer sleeve to the wrong side. You're going to have your wrong side facing you, okay? Right here. So for the sake of the video, I'm showing it to you as to how you would be looking at it. Then you're going to take your inner sleeve, okay, with the right sides up. So it's going to be wrong side to wrong side, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to pin it at the top. And when you pin that, you are going to actually sew straight across on the top, okay? You're going to be sewing this whole area straight across at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this, and I'll be right back. And here I'm just showing you exactly what you're going to do. You're going to sew wrong sides to wrong sides in this diagram. Your inner sleeve to your outer sleeve. It's going to look like the two pieces are sewn together, okay? So, now you're going to pull everything apart. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew your seams. So with right sides to right sides. This part is where I need to really show you what you're going to be doing. So, just so I turned it around so that you can see. Remember I said that you would be going in and spreading out your pleat? That's what you're going to do at this particular point. You're going to spread out your pleat. And you're going to make sure that you sew it with your other pleat. Okay? So... And in this shot, this is just to show you when you pull it up, this is your inner sleeve and your outer sleeve. And this is your wrong side of your fabric. Okay, you're going to go ahead and pin those side seams. Go all the way down. So you get to the ends. Make sure you get that all nice and straight. those pin there. You're going to go up and you're going to go ahead and pin these pieces together as well. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead now and you are going to sew. I have all these little stragglies. The little straggly pieces of thread everywhere. <laughs> so now you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew all the way down. Making sure that you spread this piece out. I'm going to go ahead and put a pin here so that there's no confusion as to the pleat needs to be sewn in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way down. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. So it was going to look like this. Sewing so like all the way down, okay? 
here's another diagram. You're going to sew right sides to right sides, and you're going to sew all the way up to from your outer sleeve to your inner sleeve, making sure you pull that inner seam up. Okay, guys. So you've already gone ahead. You've sewn everything. You've opened up the pleat area. You've sewn all of that down. Okay. Now this is the reason why. So now, when you go to flip over. The inside piece. This is going to be your inside sleeve so that it's nice and clean and you're not seeing all of that. Okay? So, this is how your sleeve is going to look. And this is the forming of your particular sleeve. So now we're going to get to the fun part. Okay? Go ahead and you're going to gather this entire bottom piece of your sleeve. You're going to go ahead and gather that. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually gather that piece to the size of your inside sleeve. Okay? So it needs to, so this is the part that you have to pay attention to. You need to go ahead and gather this. But you're going to be gathering it to the same size as your inner sleeve. So this is your inner sleeve. This is the size of it. And the size of that, depending on what you decided to do, mine is an 8. About 8.5, okay? So I'm going to gather my outer sleeve to an 8. You're going to gather, you're going to gather that whole bottom sleeve. So this is what it looks like from the top, and this is how it looks like from the bottom, okay? So this is where you get that nice billowy effect, so you're going to gather that. So now you're going to put your hand in the bottom portion of your sleeve, okay? This is the top. Remember, we sewed the inner sleeve and the outer sleeve together at this top portion. So now you're going to go ahead and grab your bottom portion, and you are going to actually be sewing that piece with this piece together, okay? But you have to make sure that it all fits. So go ahead first and find your side seam for your inner piece and you're going to match it with your side seam for your outer sleeve, okay? Now that you've gathered, you're gonna turn your shirt inside. You're going to tuck your sleeve, inside sleeve, you're going to tuck that inside, okay, and you're going to pull your inside sleeve out, matching, make sure to match, matching your seam, and you will pin all the way around, okay? I usually keep my gathered threads just in case I need to adjust anything, so I do not snip those off until after everything is in place. So you're going to go ahead and match those areas. I'm going to pin, sleep, matching your seam to seam. Make sure I get that in there properly. So you're going to match seam to seam. You're going to go in. Work on those gathers, make sure that it fits. Remember, but when you cut for all of the measurements, at the end of the day, all of this will fit based on your actual measurements. So you're gonna go ahead and just pin all of this across your inner sleeve to your outer sleeve, redistributing those gathers, making sure that they're nice and even, okay? So do you see how that fits? Now you're gonna go ahead and sew all of this all across. Okay, and I'll be right back to show you. So go ahead and sew your sleeves and we'll be right back. Okay, so guys, so you have your sleeve, it's done. So you're gonna go in now, you're gonna go ahead again and you're going to gather this because now this is your armband and this piece needs to fit this piece, okay? And you see you have this much excess. So now you're going to go ahead and Take what you just sewn and with the gathering stitch, make sure it was a gathering stitch and you're going to go ahead and you're going to gather this 
according to the actual size that you want. Gather according to the size that you want your arm band to be, okay? So this is your arm band. And usually how I have mine is when I have it sitting, I usually like for it to sit here, but it's a little, of course it's big. Um, I don't like it's like I like to be able to pull it up and down and I don't like it just flesh So I usually go ahead and put an elastic in it so that I can go up and down as I ease and how I please Okay, if you don't want to do that That is fine. You will just skip The step where we're putting elastic, but you'll do everything up to that and you can actually follow this piece on your pattern. You can follow that straight from the McCall's pattern as to how to attach that to the bottom portion of your sleeve because that's still the same. So I've gone ahead and I went ahead, I've gone ahead and I've gathered my particular um, sleeve to where I want it to be. I'm gonna cut all my little gathering stitches here. And I just want to show you just quickly what the actual sleeve will be looking like to some extent. And this is what it looks like. So you have your, um, so you have one row, which is the first row, your second row, and then this is your third row. And remember, it went into here. So this is how I get that nice puff. And then your insides, because it's not attached, it gives you the ability to kind of, you know, pull it how you want it. So let's go ahead and put it on. You can see what I'm talking about. And then you can kind of, you know, rough it up. <laughs> As you can see, the pleats are still nice and straight with the light um, press that I gave it. But if I didn't give it a press, this is what it would look like. Okay? So, remember I told you I gave it a light press for the front portion, just right over here. But for the inside, I didn't give it a press because I still wanted it to have sort of that feel and kind of just, you know, fold it when I feel I want it folded. But if you want, you can go ahead too and you could tack, you know, down here. You would just go in and tack that, tack that, and then that's it. That's really up to you. But there goes the sleeve. Okay. So now you're going to take piece number and you are going to go right sides to right sides and you're going to stitch 5 eighths of an inch straight down. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so now I've gone ahead and taken my sleeve band. I've gone ahead and sewn it together. I've also, with right sides to right sides, I've also given it a good press and I've folded it up under. As it calls for in the pattern on number 26 through 28, steps 26 through 28. So if you're following the pattern, these are the steps that you will follow. As I stated earlier, I prefer a snug part for my bands. My wrists are very small, so I don't want the sleeves to hang here. I also, when I pull it up, I want it to have a nice fit. So I actually add an elastic inside so that I can give it that fit that I want. And that's really up to you. I will be showing you how I do that. And for those who are more of an advanced or intermediate sewer, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. If you're a beginner sewer, I suggest that you follow a video that talks about how to add elastic in either a waistband or armband. Um, or if you're following any patterns, but I can also show you how I've done it here. So you're going to take your sleeve that we've already gathered. <clears throat> I've got all my little stragglies. And I use a serger, so what I do is I've gone ahead and I've sewn everything that I needed to sew, but at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with the serger once I sew everything together so that I don't have that much bulk in my, um, in my sleeve. So find your side seam, which is right here. And you're also gonna find the side seam in this. You're gonna go ahead and match up your side seams. Mm -hmm. 
gonna go ahead and make a pin, gonna pin it right here. And you're gonna pin it across. Making sure to check to see that it's going to evenly be distributed. So make sure you pull all of your gathered pieces of that sleeve band. You make sure you pull that all out so that it does not get stuck. I know when I first um, started sewing, you know, I'm in a rush and I want to get everything done, but there were times that I may have missed, um, you know, those little steps and I had to go back and do that and it's frustrating having to use this seam ripper. So yeah, take your time and uh, make sure that you, you do that. That's the one lesson that I will say that I've learned while sewing. So take your time. Go ahead and pull that in. Take your time, no rush. There's no rush to do a lot of these things. At the end of the day, if you're sewing for yourself, you want it to look nice. You want your picture to look nice. You want to take a nice, you know, shot to have clothes that represent you. You don't want to say, hey, yeah, I made that, and then you have a Gordon, <laughs> Gordon Cottrell. Is it Gordon Cottrell? I can't even remember from a different world. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we don't want no Gordons over here, okay? No offense, Gordon, but we don't want no Gordons over here. Pieces that are here. And then when you go to sew this, because I have the gathered pieces, I do a little bit over 5 eighths of an inch just so I can get... Um, it all in as you can see so I do a little bit over five eighths of an inch um, so that I can make sure that all of that is there so you're gonna go ahead and sew all of this all the way around and um, yeah it's gonna look like that so you're gonna go ahead and sew all of this all the way around so now guys gone ahead clean all of this up before I surge it, I wanted you to see what it would look like, especially for those who do not have a serger. So like I said, you can go ahead and you can cut all of this out. You can cut all of that out so it's not bulky. I'm going to go ahead and take my serger and clean all of this up, okay? And I'm gonna turn your, your sleeve to the right side, to the outside. You see, this is your armband. And you see how it gave it that nice puff look with that? And that looks really good, actually. See how that does? And it gives it that nice, that nice feel. So this has been nicely surged, as you can see. See that? Okay guys, I went ahead and sewn mine, but I also went ahead and searched it so that I could cut out that excess bulk. And this is where I was telling you that you could either surge it if you have a serger. If you do not have a serger, you can just go ahead and cut right up until where you sewed, okay? Making sure not to cut the actual fabric. So that's how this portion of your sleeve is going to look. This is your sleeve band. And remember, now this is your sleeve. So, put my arms in. We're gonna fix that. And then that's it. That's how you got your little sleeve and you can continue your, your pattern how you want it, but I'm gonna show you how I attach this to my actual um, my actual pattern, okay? So go ahead and turn this inside out. So you see how it looks when you turn it to the wrong side? You see how that, how you have a nice clean side inside when it's surged? Yeah, that's exactly um, why I did that particular portion of it, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and turn this around in the fold line 
making sure to tuck all of that in nicely. You're going to give this a nice press. And you're going to go ahead and slip stitch. And slip stitch is a term meaning hand stitch that in. So, so with your hands, however you may call it. I'm not going to slip stitch. Again, this is the part that I will be adding my um, elastic band. So I have an elastic band. I actually took where I wanted to measure, which is right here on my wrist. It has a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a, some giveaway, but when I go up, it's comfortable. When I bring it down, it's nice still and fit it. So what I'm going to do is leave an opening here after I stitch in the ditch. And what I mean by stitching in the ditch is I'm going to go ahead and pin all of this across in here, and I'm going to catch, make sure that I catch all of that in, in here. It's, you're going to leave this portion open just a little piece open so you're going to go ahead and sew all the way around okay and you're going to leave a portion open where you're going to add your elastic in so now we have our sleeve here and now we're doing the sleeve band and this is the portion um, that i was talking to you about that either you can slip stitch this area which is hand stitching with the needle for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And what that means is I'm going to just go ahead and stitch right inside the actual seam, making sure that I catch the back side of this band. So in order to make sure that I do that, I'm going to pin within my ditch, making sure that I'm catching that. You see that's caught right there so that I know that it will go in. So that's going to hold it there. Go in and pull that up a little bit past that. See? So now when I sew, this will be inside the band. So you have to, so I'm just going to go around that stitching in the ditch. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all of these pieces. And then we'll be done. We'll attach our sleeve to our blouse and give everything a nice good press. In and then I'll show you exactly what we did. So I'm done stitching the ditch. This is what it looks like. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take your elastic. Decide on how snug you want it. Fits comfortably here, but as it goes up here, this is, I kind of want it and it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and you're going to clip to where you think it would. I usually wear mine up here, but if I put it here, at least it's, it's not too bad. Okay, so like right to about right here. And then when I put it up, it's okay and it's comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm going to cut two pieces of that. I have this thing called the bobkin, and we'll go ahead and you use that to feed the elastic through. Take that. And remember, I told you I left the side open. So that's the side that I left open. I'm gonna go ahead and feed my elastic through that. And just go around with it all the way till you get to the desired area you need to close up. And when you bring it right through, here's the two pieces. And you see how that now brings it in my sleeve band? And go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and pin that here. And then I do a nice zigzag stitch across. And then you'll just close You'll just close this up when you're done. So guys, your sleeve is done. By now you've gone ahead and you've added your elastic, you've closed your sleeve band, your armband, and now here is a look at what your sleeve is going to look like. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on to show you. 
So that's basically it. It's lovely. It has the nice bounce, the fullness to it. It still has the light pleats that we added. Um, so again, this is exactly how I created the sleeve. And now what I'm going to do next is add it to my blouse. And I'll be showing you that in a sec. So you're going to turn your blouse inside out. And you're going to go ahead and take your sleeve, the right sides of your sleeves, and you're going to put that in to your armhole. So right sides to right sides. You're going to locate the seam of your bodice with the seam of your sleeve. And you're going to find that and you're going to pin that. So now you're going to go ahead and pin all the way around, all the way around to insert your sleeve. Okay, so now you have everything pinned. Add a couple more pins if you need to so that you can make sure that you have everything covered. Um, but yeah, this is it. I am so excited. I really can't wait to wear this <laughs> and get this tutorial out to you guys. Because a lot of you guys have been asking me how I created the sleeve. And it was so hard for me to actually show people or tell them. I, I had to actually do a video. So this is my first YouTube video. I hope it did you justice and you were able to understand exactly what I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this off camera and I'll be right back. Guys, there you have it. I've sewn both sleeves on. I'm so excited to get started and wear this shirt for you. I'm going to try to match it with something cute in my wardrobe currently. And um, I'm going to take some good pictures. Please comment below. This is my first YouTube video, so let me know how I did. Um, also, just tell me if you want to see more videos from me, if you enjoyed this video. If you need more explanation, reach out to me. Um, I do not mind helping you slay. So, hi slayers. Enjoy your day. And I can't wait to see how you all slayed this pattern. So guys, I am done. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. I hope it was helpful and that you were able to see how I did my sleeve method. Please leave comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Also, if you get a chance, follow me on That's So Monica on Instagram and Facebook. Keep on slaying slayers. Until next time, mwah!